Welcome again to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Joining me today is Dr. Cheryl Barnaby. Dr. Barnaby is an Associate Professor in the Departments of Medicine and Community Health Sciences at the Cummings School of Medicine at the University of Calgary. Great to have you back. Thanks for having me. So let's talk a little bit about structured patient involvement in rheumatoid arthritis care. Can you discuss the role of patient-reported outcomes in the care of rheumatoid arthritis patients? I personally think that we've uh, really focused on treat to target in rheumatology uh, for several years and obviously there's great benefit to being very objective and structured in how we uh, advance yes. medications. I think the one thing that we continuously see uh, is mm -hmm. that patients still go on even though their joint disease might be controlled and there's no inflammation on their examinations, there are still quite a few domains where patients aren't having their symptoms addressed uh, by the rheumatology community. So in particular, people still have high levels of pain, they still have problems with function, they don't feel quite as normal as they yes. did before they had their arthritis, and I think that actually gets uh, largely ignored probably because we feel that we don't have the right tools um, to address some of those other symptoms or we might decide that it's related to something outside of their rheumatic disease and so sure. it's not falling into our responsibility. So I think uh, as a rheumatology community we actually have to pay more attention to this and come up with some strategies to address some of the patient concerns uh, and symptoms that continue to go on despite uh, their effective uh, therapies. Well what do you think might be an effective way to capture all of those symptoms and quality of life sort of metrics that will be needed to make sure that you individualize patient care and you have the best outcomes. There are several ways to, to collect quality of life data or pain or function uh, and it's fairly simple to do those but people don't use the numbers uh, in the sure. clinic. So we collect it, but we don't respond to it. And I think Absolutely. that that's really doing a disservice to patients uh, when we're not applying that. Mm. Um, I think too one of the benefits of rheumatology practice is that we do get to know our patients over time yes. and so we get to follow them through their life course and I think if we continue to nurture those relationships with our patients and not get tied down into the rapidity of a, of a follow-up visit or the need to push forward and see more and more patients every day, exactly. uh, again we'll get a better sense of where our patients are at because we actually have time to talk with them. And improving the communication among members of the interdisciplinary team. Correct, exactly. That really patient-centered approach. That's right, yeah. Well, what kind of domains do you collect in your practice? Tell us a little bit about what you're doing in your practice. Yep. So in my practice, I will collect their joint counts um, as well as an update on their treatments and responses. But I do um, strategically collect uh, their function through the health assessment questionnaire. Yes. I also do collect pain and fatigue uh, and their global evaluation scores and the duration mm -hmm. of morning stiffness. So when I track those over time, uh, what I find is that yes, we can get objective joint measures um, like the swollen joint count, tender joint count down, uh, but people are still having high levels of pain, problems with function, uh, fatigue that's ongoing. And so now the challenge is really to try and address those uh, within our usual domains and, and try to bring in a broader group of health professionals who can assist us in responding to those symptoms that patients are having. Without a doubt. Well, talking about different screening domains, I wanted to talk about screening for depression in your clinic. How do you screen for depression in your clinic? So the questionnaire that's been advised um, by a psychiatry colleague is called the PHQ-9. Yes. Uh, so it is a fairly easy to administer uh, depression screen. And I think the challenge there is to always make sure, again, that there is a backup system for when you um, do identify someone has issues with depression. So in my own practice, I work closely with family physicians in the clinic. Wonderful. And so we have a good relationship um, to both to manage rheumatic diseases plus the other uh, conditions that the patient might have, including depression. Well, that's so important even in clinical trials. When you're screening for depression, you need to have a mechanism built into place to make sure that you can have positive screens taken care of. That's right. Yes, yeah. so very important. We want to thank you very much for sharing your words of wisdom and for the excellent work you continue to do. Thank you very much. To our viewers, thank you again for joining us for this practice update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Please join us again soon.